Have you ever prayed for someone and they didn't get healed? Most of us have experienced these things where we laid hands on someone, we prayed for them and they didn't get healed. Or we were praying for someone we know and they ended up passing away of a sickness. If this has happened to you, you're not alone. Many of your beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we have experienced these things. And in this video, we're going to be exploring why this happened and how we can prevent this from happening next time. And if it happens again, why did it happen? Even though we have followed all the advice and the principles we can find in the Bible, why are they not getting healed or why did they end up passing away? Let's be honest, not everyone we pray for gets healed. We believe for healing, we know healing is for today, but yet we don't see everyone being healed. And we can brush this off, we can come up with different doctrines and theology to cover up these things and say healing is not for today and to stop believing. Even though we won't find a specific verse that says, you're not healed because of this or that, we can still find some really good biblical principles and conclusions that we can come to. And I believe at the end of this video, you're gonna have faith to keep praying for the sick and to see the sick healed. The first reason why I believe some people are not healed and some people do pass away, even though we've prayed for healing, is to keep us focused on the age to come. And I believe this is the biggest one and people don't really talk about this when it comes to healing, but I believe having our eyes focused on the age to come is so important because we can quickly be deceived by this world we live in right now. By the riches, by the prosperity, by the health, which are all good things. I'm not speaking against those things. But Jesus said, where our treasures are, there our heart is also. So if our treasure is on earth, our heart will be focused on things of the earth too. The Bible says we should be collecting treasures in heaven. We should be looking on the return of Jesus. We should be focused on the age to come because God doesn't want us to live for this age alone. If everyone is healed now, it's almost like the kingdom is already here. But God says that there is an appointed time for the restoration of all things. And this time has not yet come. But when Christ returns, there will be a resurrection of the dead where we who are alive and the ones who are dead are going to be receiving a new body where there will be no sickness and no diseases and no decay. So we should absolutely believe for healing now that healing is for today. We can take it by faith, by his stripes, we are healed. But also we can't neglect the fact that doesn't matter how much you pray, sometimes they're just not healed. And there could be other reasons for this, which we will also explore shortly. But when people are not healed right away, we can give them this hope, this encouragement to look upon Jesus, to look upon his return, that when he returns, he's going to give them a new body. He's going to give them life. And though their body will die, they themselves will not die. We we're supposed to walk on the narrow way. And we can quickly get thrown into these ditches on either side where we pray for people and they're not being healed and then we can just come to the conclusion, okay, healing is not for today. And all we do is we look upon the day when Christ returns or we, we wait till we die to, to go to heaven. But the Bible speaks about healing that is for today, that when Jesus sent out the, the apostles and the disciples, he always sent them with authority, with power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. So we should have this balanced view that healing is for today. We should per persistently and consistently believe in healing for today. But on the same side, we should also encourage people on the hope that is set before us on the age to come and the resurrection of the dead. Now, I, I don't want you to twist my words. I'm not saying that God will make you sick so you can set your eyes on the age to come. No, we have a good father who has promised us through his word a long life, a healthy life. But I truly believe that he will allow things to happen. So we remember that our citizenship is not on this earth but it's in heaven. And that if we do lose a loved one, we know they are in a better place. So again, there's this balance that yes, God wants us healthy. And these are promises and his written word of God, but also our heart should not be in the systems of this world because we are citizens of heaven. So I believe this was the first reason that some are not healed. Even though we pray, we're, we have faith, we're persistent, we're consistent, we're, we're taking this by force. We believe healing for this person, but yet they pass away and we don't see healing. Now, there could be other reasons for this, which we will talk about now. 
The next reason is a lack of faith. And first of all, we should never tell people they're not being healed because of a lack of faith. Because this doesn't give them any hope. It actually does the opposite. We should never tell them that, hey, you actually, you don't have enough faith. No, we should actually put this on us. If we're praying for people and they're not being healed, we should tell them, hey, I still have to grow in Christ. I'm growing and learning in my walk with Christ. And I need, I think I need to get rid of some unbelief in my heart. Because most of the time we, we believe God heals. We have faith God heals. And faith is not a force. Faith is a state of heart. We have all received a measure of faith. The, the bigger problem here is an unbelief in our hearts. That yes, we believe God heals. But sometimes there's still this small doubt that we don't um, believe that we can be healed right now. And we... We tend to think that the healing is something in the future. But just like our sins were paid for on the cross 2,000 years ago, we were also healed on the cross 2,000 years ago. By His stripes, we are healed. And if we believe with a heart, we can be healed in this age. And I believe this is truly God's heart, that He wants us healed right now, that we can demonstrate this kingdom that is coming, that where there will be no sicknesses. And as ambassadors, we can already proclaim this kingdom of no sickness, of full deliverance of the enemy. So this unbelief in our hearts can hinder us from healing. And Jesus said the way to get rid of this unbelief is by fasting and praying. We don't fast to receive something from God, but we can fast to change our heart belief. And when the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, why couldn't we cast out this demon? Jesus said that this kind, this kind of unbelief only goes out by prayer and fasting. And if we speak to the mountain and believe it will be moved, he said it will be moved. So if we speak to the issues in life, to the sicknesses or whatever it might be, Jesus said nothing will be impossible for us. And so that's where our faith has to be. And if something is not working, we have to get rid of the unbelief in our hearts. But never put this on someone else. Rather build them up, give them hope and build up their faith so they can believe that by His stripes we are healed. The third point is a lack of persistence. And I see this quite common, is that people will pray once and then they stop praying. So they, they let's say they see someone sick on the street, whether it's a broken arm, broken leg or whatever, and they'll pray once and then they just go away. Or they just say, just keep on believing. But there's a biblical principle we can apply that we should pray multiple times to see a change. I can give you countless of examples where we prayed for someone and they were not healed right away. But as we prayed again, just a few seconds later, their condition improved. And we prayed again and they were completely healed. So sometimes we don't see healing right away, but we can stay persistent and continue to push in to see that healing happen. For example, in Mark 8 verse 23, we read that Jesus prayed for a blind man twice. First he prayed and then the man replied, I see men like trees. And then Jesus prayed for him again and then his eyesight was completely restored. So here we see Jesus was praying twice and I believe he did that to demonstrate to us that sometimes we have to pray multiple times. And he also said in Luke 11 that we have to keep on seeking and keep on asking. So we, we believe that as we lay hands on people they're healed the first time but if we don't see improvements it's not a sin, it's not a problem to pray again and to be persistent. What's important though that the heart does not become or turn into a heart of unbelief. And if we do it too much, it actually shows a heart of unbelief. So there's always a balance. Because when we pray, we should also believe that it's answered and the prayer is heard. So there's a balance in being persistent, but also not over-exaggerating. Because sometimes it's just good to come into this rest and just believe in the heart that, yes, I am healed. God is healing me right now. And to cease from praying because then you're resting in God's work, you're resting in His Son, and by this resting, He can perform and do what He needs to do. Next point is a lack of discernment. And I've seen this quite often where a sickness is caused by an evil spirit. We see this in the time of Jesus as well, when He was walking on this earth. There will be times when He prayed for healing, but then also there will be times when He saw that a sickness is caused by an evil spirit, and He would cast out the demon. So, there's a balance of discernment here where we have to discern, okay, is this actually just a physical ailment or is this caused by a demon? I'm not saying that every sickness is a demon, but they, there are instances where this is a case. So if we pray for healing, nothing happens. We can ask the person if we can pray in a different way. We can tell them, hey, can I pray in a spiritual way? And what we do then is actually we start to do a deliverance on this person and we command this evil 
spirit to leave this person in the name of Jesus. So one, we can pray for deliverance, for healing, and one, we can just pray that the body is healed in Jesus' name. Both will result in healing, but the source is different and the method is different. The next one is intercession. I see this so much in a lot of denominations where they pray for healing, not in the form of taking authority, but where they intercede to the Father for the Father to heal this person. There's nothing wrong in interceding for people. And I believe there's a place for this in healing as well. But the go-to should always be taking authority over the sickness. The Father can't do something that he placed in our hands. All the authority has been given to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ has given this authority to us. So in his name, in his authority, we can take authority over demons, over sicknesses and command them to be healed. So we don't have to intercede to the Father for healing. We can speak to the sickness and command it to die and to leave in Jesus' name. If you see someone sick, don't intercede. Don't say, Father, please heal this person. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command this pain to leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command this broken leg to be healed right now. We have to take this assertive approach and command healing right there on the spot. So I hope this video gives you some clarity on why some people are not healed. And again, the Bible is not 100% clear on why this happens. And we should not come up with doctrines and theologies why this happens. But I do believe that some of these things I've mentioned, uh, they're bibli biblical principles that we can learn from. And most importantly, not live for this age, but the age to come. And we can use healing and deliverance to prophetically demonstrate this coming kingdom, where there will be no sickness. And we will be delivered of the enemy where we will receive new bodies. And the ones who have passed away, they will be resurrected and receive new bodies as well. So I hope this teaching gives you a balanced perspective of healing. And we can have faith that God wants us to be healed today and he, that he's always working for our good. And we just need to trust him and continue to pray for healing and continue to demonstrate the power of God and the kingdom of God, whether that's for ourselves or for others. If you found this video helpful, make sure to send it to a friend, send it to someone who will find this helpful. Until next time, Maranatha.